Grab my water. Good to go. Fire, water, wind, earth. We did a good job of not protecting these crystals. All the crystals are now gone. Um, so all that peace and prosperity is, uh, going. Let's jump back in. Alright, so I'm now in World 3. Beat the pyramid. I've equipped everyone with Hermes sandals. Oh, good. I'm going to do the second tablet dungeon now. Let's go to the island shrine. In order to get um, Holy and Flare Spellblade, I have to do this tablet and then uh, Fork Tower. Oh. These guys. Um. I'm pretty sure these guys are vulnerable to break. I think I did that last time, but only have one person with uh, enough spell blade. Okay, good. Lena has enough spell blades. Krill does not have enough spell blades, but uh, Lena does. I'm gonna bring up my spreadsheet. So Lena should be able to uh, break Spellblade here. Yeah, it's break a clock. Last time I did not realize that Krill did not did not have enough Spellblade. Krill to sting. Now that I have all the songs. All right, this seems fine. Let's do it. Bonk. Nice, uh, great blade on. Yeah, fiesta. I'm doing Gaia because I want to see, like, what kind of thing we're getting in this dungeon. Yeah, I assume it's Gust, Sonic Boom, and Wind Slash. One gone. Yeah, alright. It's much easier when you have two spellbladers, unlike last time where I only had one. Oops. Go ahead and save again and head into the island shrine. The island shrine, be aware of, um, it does have um, a level 5 death in here. <laughs> If you are in level 5, you could buy it. Um, at least at this point, usually you have Lena a different level from everyone else. So not everyone is going to get level 5 death, um, thankfully. But usually, anyway. But uh, you're still nasty, so don't come in uh, at level 5. Like 30 or 35 is probably where you are at this point. Don't, don't do it. You could die. Alright. We are burning a book, which seems kind of rude. I don't want my bark singing, actually. Sounds fair. Did we get to see the power of the rune axe? Romeo's battle, it's still good. Ow. Yeah, there we go. So the Runax um, uses MP to do uh, critical. Really more uh, potions. Anyway. So uh, once you run out of MP, uh, <laughs> it won't do crits anymore, but it still need normal attacks. Uh, the damage it does is also like your magic that, like, influences it. Oh, no, I don't, don't want to be 
I don't, I don't want, fuck, oh, god, what an asshole. But what if, ah, what if this is like the one dude I do not want? What if, ah, he's immune to stop, so there's no point in doing a uh, Romeo's ballad. Oh, I've got the chicken knife. I should use the chicken knife to run away. Phoenix down my per uh, Lana. Actually, what I'll probably do is just run away. Um, come on, chicken knife. These guys have a shit ton of health. They're incredibly annoying, and I don't want to fight one back attack when I'm dead. That just sounds like pain in the ass. It is funny that Chicken Knife is being useful for uh, forcing runs. Maybe. Uh, don't die, please. Oh, I am not getting that run. Sure, I can run. <sighs> if you do me a solid curl, thank you. God damn it. Yeah, it hasn't given the cat flea message, so that really only happens in bosses. Alright. He's a cottage. Alright, well then a Phoenix down, because Phoenix downs are dear. Ugh, a tall Avis back attack is just like the worst shit. I don't actually know what their run percentage is. If I had to guess, um, I would say uh one percent. I know you can run from them, because I have, but Ah, Executor, these are the guys that uh Bye. Ah, uh, those are the guys that can level 5 death you. You can death them in return if you wish. Ah, Tony misses a 10%. I'm surprised it's a 10%. I'm also gonna get this wrong because I always, I always get this wrong. By wrong, I mean I get it right. Hey, no one's level 4 either. Yeah, these guys have a bunch of level spells, including level 5 death. Wonder if a lot of island shrine enemies are, uh... Not... No. There's two hidden items in this room. Good, that was the wrong way. I like going the wrong way. Numblade. And once you get further in the game, you do start um, fighting enemies that are immune to stop. Yeah, there's hidden items in that switch room. They don't count towards. I feel like the uh, mobile version has like a chest count, and I do not believe they count towards that. Yeah, two hidden items. A high potion and iron draft, so not like super necessary or anything. This version of the PS1 English translation? Yeah, the PS1 translation is hilarious and I love it. I have super fond memories of the PS1 version. I probably could never go back and actually play the PS1 version. Um, but... Who 
this is one of two fights you can have in this chest. Over, um, cruisy standard fight, really. I wonder if I want the air knife on my Geomancer. Um, wind slash and everything. It's probably need to stop my axes. Can't hit for shit. Going well. Illusion makes, makes it very difficult to hit him. Um, I'm not sure how the mechanics of this works. No, we're just gonna have to beat him down. I wonder if it summons like another copy of him you have to kill before you can actually get back to damaging him again. I'll look into how he's programmed. I don't want to just beat his ass down. Ding. That Runex is strong. Yeah, so his two is gone now, and I think we can now hit him. Yeah. I think that's how it does it. Much like the Blue Dragon 3 only shows one on the screen, I think he basically summons another copy of himself if to get through. Yes! I just throw first the Berserker. to run away, uh, like from a tall Avis, I will just switch the chicken knife back on. The good thing about this game is that you can, uh, what weapons on the fly? Oh, hey, the damned. You've seen them. They're in the pyramids. Castle is really one of the hardest places to run away from. There really aren't that many other places that are really hard. Oh, hello, prototype. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Okay. So this chest can either be like a mecha head or a prototype, depending on how unlucky you are. Uh, he's immune to stop. Uh, oh, I'm on my ass, probably, actually. He's not weak to thunder. Um, probably end up trying to chump through him with my Berserker who ignores defense. I think now that I'm in World 3... <laughs> nope. Defense is still a problem. Runax is good though. Runax is in fact that good shit. Yeah, prototypes are much more doable in World 3 than the Unrolled one. Uh, you don't need, like, specific strats anymore, but they're still very chonky and still very difficult to get through. That chest is normally a mech ahead, but sometimes you get unlucky. Now, Beast Killer, which I believe is a whip. Okay, 
getting back attacked by three executors when you have a level five is probably uh, where you absolutely get murdered. <laughs> What's he gonna look at? Um, yeah. Killer is a whip. He's master only. Alright, I'm really, really bad at this floor, so. See if I can do this. I make zero promises about not falling in a hole, although I do have Geomancer, so I shouldn't be able to fall in holes. Hey. All right, Silent Shrine isn't very long. We are at the end of it. It can be, f it can feel a lot longer if you have to fight a lot of uh, tall Avises. <laughs> Those guys take forever. All right, so I don't think there's much to do to gear up for the boss fight coming up. We grab a couple of chests. Powering up my chicken knife. Oh! Oh, good! Excellent! I got a 10% right away. Ha! Bye bye, tots. second tablet. Uh, you, this is the one you have to get second as well. Um, the third or fourth tablet, she can do one or either, and you can do them in either order. Uh, but you do need to get the pyramid first, and you do need to get this one second. You can't get to the other two dungeons without doing this one. Say, so, um, uh, let me probably switch the chicken knife here. Uh, Harp should work from the back of the row, I think. Oh, I actually don't know. I'm gonna look at that. Is the Apollo's Harp back row? Uh, full power from back row, so yeah. Good in the back, got Runex. Got, uh, uh, yeah, the Assassin's Daggers. Probably what I want. All right, let's do this. Let's fight. This boss isn't hard. Um, it's just really gimmicky. And uh, it's actually a fight in which Summoner has a hard time. Yeah, okay, what we have to do is find the real one. If you hit with an all attack, uh, you get a counter in your face. That's from three of them. Basically, if you AoE it, um, all the fake ones counter you, um, and it's pretty nasty, so you don't- you really don't want to, uh, have AoEs in this fight. True, someone only has the big baps. Alright. Oh, I guess, uh, I'm gonna hero's room. Inside my bar, giving everyone levels. That sounds fun. Ooh, nice. Every time I hit with a runite, I'm pretty happy. He has 20,000 health, so you have to just hit away at all of them until you find the right one. He moves. Um, he can stay in the same one instead of moving as well. Um... Eh, which happened there? It's a big old puzzle fight, so... Oh, there was a can't escape. Ouch. That's, that's the first time I do want to get hit by Hurricane. Oh, no! No, please hit with Hurricane again, actually. 
The Hero's Rhyme also, I believe, increases uh, the amount of health that regain gives you. Oh. So uh, I always just come back, yeah. Uh, death only works on fakes, but they just, they just come back. Okay, I know which one's a real one. Double. As long as you've got good single target damage on a couple of people, this fight will go uh, reasonably fast. And do you do less damage on the ones in the back? Um, as always, back rules apply. I thought maybe he was dead there, but alas, no. Once more for the Wendigo in the back. And you can see that the health I'm getting from uh, Mighty March is going up as my level goes up. Mighty March isn't that useful on its own, but combined with things like Hero's Rhyme, it can get and Swift Song makes it come out faster as well. Um, it can get pretty good. Farris is getting like 200 per tick now, which is great. Nuh! Bye! No! Farris is trying. Yeah, Mind Blast is annoying because that's sap. But my, uh, Mighty March should be, uh, overcoming that now. Still not dead. Hero's Rhyme is just flat out uh, the best, the best song. It makes all the other songs better. Oh. All right, so the main one's dead, so they should all just disappear now. Bard can make you almost invincible. Because the levels you gain, even if you die, if you revive, you keep those levels, so... My bard didn't get interrupted like that whole fight, which really helped. That fight went very smoothly because the bard just kept singing. Alright, Fork Tower. It's forked up. I'm gonna go get that, uh, one I have to leave here, which is always fun. Um, then I'm gonna go get the Gaia Bell, is the Gaia Bell? No, it's the Rune, the Rune Bell. I'm gonna grab that, it's gonna be useful for something later on. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't even need to use a tent. Alright. Let's leave this horrible place. Oh, really doesn't want me to leave this fight. Just everything I need to stop. There we go. Okay, when you don't have a uh, teleport, you do have to. The game kind of assumes that you've got teleport and that you have a time mage to use it, uh, which is not always the case. Why are you not using teleport? Why are you walking out of a dungeon? 
They gave you the option to leave the dungeon. Switches up. Um, back to the start. Now. Freedom! Alright, let's go to the steel castle. Where we'll inevitably fight a shield dragon and it'll annoy me greatly. This is why I save. No! Yeah. I should probably just like um where's chicken knife? Um does my geomancer have it on? Yeah, I think it's I put it on my geomancer and I ugh. You can't knock me silly, silly. Immensely. At least my berserker can't actually be confused. Come on, run. 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 Come on. Yeah! Good last. Another weapon I can use in here, which is the Gaia Bell. This is like the Gaia Hammer, it has a 25% uh, chance of casting Quake on attack. Uh, it uses Axe Formula, it's full damage from the back row, um, and it boosts earth damage by 50%. So it's not bad. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. It, I mean, the main thing is it's got 35 attack. Like, it, it doesn't really make it against basically every, everything else we can have, but, uh... It's also not the worst thing we could take from here. Alright, we're gonna get everything eventually, so I'm gonna grab anything I can get my hands on, really. Fire Lash is very good if you have a Beastmaster. Um, it occasionally casts... Ooh, it's either Firaga or Flare, and I don't remember which. I feel like it's Firaga. Uh, another good one if you have uh, a samurai is the mass immune. It makes you go first in battle. It's a very strong katana, has a pretty high crit rate. Very solid uh, katana. Alright. Well, two tablets down. I'll only come back here after I get the next two. I just wanted to grab that guy bell. And then fight another shield dragon. Ah! Alright, so now we want to go... Oh shit! Not the void! I hit the void! I did not mean to hit the void! <laughs> Yes, Master can also be used for free haste, but I have the Hermes saddle, so... But yeah, um, honestly, I feel like the only, um... The only legendary weapon that isn't class-specific is the Assassin's, uh, dagger. 
Every other one is pretty classic physics. I mean, I guess the Magus Rod and the Sage... Well, the Sage Staff is, because it boosts power up fully, so it's kind of white mage only. You can use it as it were, the Chemist and a Time Mage, but eh. Um, and the Magus Rod... Uh, of course, only Rod users and kind of black mage of the summoners, but technically the Magus Rod and the Sage Staff aren't class specific, but uh... That'd be what, 3 out of 12? The other 9 are definitely class. Ready to heal up? Good. Alright. Now I have to decide who I want to take which tower. It's a little risky to do 2 and 2. Um. With having a Berserker, because the Berserker has to go to Minotaur. Um, I want to use Silence Blade on Rug Wizard, on Nerf I could potentially get away with Ricky to Rug Wizard and the other three to Minotaur. I guess the question is, do I need two factors? Or can I just send Faris and, like, Krill? That might be enough. And then I have Ricky and Lena, um, spellblazing Rug Wizard. I think I'll try that. I reckon the Runet that, um, Faris should do pretty alright. I need to equip a Thief Knife for Spellblade, because Spellblade does not work on harps. Funny that. He can't, uh, he can't Spellblade a harp. It's not got a blade. So yeah, Krill will just be there for throwing out items. Oh, on that note, I should buy some items. Um... Before I go do that, let's go to the Phantom Village here and buy some uh, potions and high potions. And probably Phoenix Downs now. Now that I've got all the equipment I'll ever need, I can actually just spend all my money on a uh, healing item. Buy all my money! <laughs> Sell the magic lamb. So it's so weird that it makes you split up here with basically no idea what you're going to hit at the top until you do, so, uh, it's a bit mean. Well, this is where we're going to get our last two spell blades. Are you missing two? First side question will be able to get it. I have though. I have accidentally entered the void before getting the Mirage Vest, gone, oh shit, gone and talked to him and gotten the Mirage Vest. I don't know if that's like the SNES version, but I I absolutely have been able to get the Mirage Vest um after accidentally entering the void. Oops. I don't know if you have to go like up too far into the void. I don't know if it's like complete the void or something. Krill is basically going to be an item bot for uh, Ferris. Ah! 
So it's the, it's the cutscene when the Void boss is appearing that makes the Mirage Mask go away. That makes sense, because yeah. I accidentally went in and was like, oh no, oh no, I've heard that going in here gets rid of the Mirage Vest. Popped out and then got it. No. As long as you don't go a bit far in. Run. Run. Run! These enemies, um, if you don't use spells on them, counter with, like, big blow-up magic. Uh... <laughs> Not even remotely worth fighting. Nope. I don't want to fight these tiny mages. I don't want to fight these tiny lads. Come on. Also surprisingly difficult to run away from. Although you might go up the whole tower without getting an encounter because of all the different rooms you go in. Would you please do me a solid? I'll run right on this. 5% run chance. Shit. <laughs> oh no! Tiny Lana! Come here, Tiny Lana. It's fine now. So if you have a rod user and not a staff user, um, and you want to preserve Shinri, there's a weapon in Fork Tower that'll help you out. Come on. I'm getting very unlucky with all these uh, encounters. I don't normally get anywhere near as many. The Wonder Wand! So the Wonder Wand will cycle through pretty much every spell in the game. So you just cycle through them until you uh, hit the spell before Berserk, and then... So you charge up Berserk. You go out the Shinryu fight, you use it, you use Berserk, you Berserk him, you're happy. I do not have a Rod user, so I cannot Berserk Shinryu. Which is always a deep shame. Alright. So before I go in here, I'm gonna make sure you cannot- you do not have the opportunity to rejigger your classes after, um, this point, so just make sure everyone is where they need to be. Uh, it's just Spellblade, it's just Silence Blade is gonna do it. So I'm all good, then I step up here. And we go over to the Physical Tower. So there is technically, you can actually um, open the menu before you fight Rug Wizard, but if you do, uh, it will, the, the, the game will end. It'll be game over. You don't have time to uh, open your menu. I have save stated in that and then, yeah, I've gotten stuck, so I had to like, load up an earlier save state. say Berserk Shinryu still solved Shinryu. I mean, sure, he hits like a truck and he kills you, but that's what Phoenix Downs are for. As long as you have, um, it's trickier with a Berserker because you only have three people uh, Phoenix Downing, but as long as you have four people who can Phoenix Down, he's pretty solved when he's Berserk. Even hitting like a truck. He's just much easier if you can blind him, but... The odds are you're gonna berserk and not have a way to blind him, but he's still fine. Alright. Let me use Guy in here. I guess so. It's true that Guy is not magic, so... We'll see if one person item botting is enough. <laughs> At least when I miss, I have a little uh, leeway. So he has just under 20,000 hill. So, a few, uh, rune axe hits will get him down. 
somewhere between 8 and 10. So you can see, um, with the rune axe, axes not really wild, uh, damage range. <laughs> The Rune Axe being as strong as it is really shows just how how much you can uh, lose in an attack. I have done 1800 and 2800 with this Rune Axe. Probably heal myself. I can't afford to Krill to die more than Ferris dying. But she's now you hit him and provoke all those counters. at one point, but yeah, I think two and two is the right decision. You can absolutely take Rug Wizard down uh, with one, like just by Mystic Knight, but it'll be faster with the two of them. Right, you have to actually press uh, A to fight him. Alright, let's get my Silence Spellblade on. Yes, okay, good, yes. Spellblade is magic, so it doesn't provoke him. The attacks would, but we're silencing him, so he's not able to return. Well, we have to chop through his nearly 17,000 health with uh, two attacks, so I'm gonna be... What, we're doing like... 8 800 damage around? Oh. So the Rug Wizard is extremely mad at me right now. He keeps trying to return the fight and it keeps having no effect and he is extremely pissed off. What the fuck? No swords! Hey! I said no! I said no! <laughs> Stop it! Get help! He does have regain so it's going to be even longer. I am outpacing the regain so... But he's also vulnerable to, uh, stop. But, of course, Romeo's Ballad isn't, uh, 100%. I actually don't know if Sing also, um, gets his guilt. I might save state here and, uh... Does singing annoy this man? I guess he just stopped him when he Try. Is singing magic? Yeah, it is. Potentially it's more damage. I can't actually knock myself out of this once I start doing it. Um, I could, like, strength or hero's rhyme. Singing strength might just end up being faster than having the uh, 300 damage from the bard. I don't know which is faster for like a single person attacking, raising levels or raising uh, strength. They both go into like the same formula. Well, this is doing more damage uh, quite fast, so. I've jumped up from 480 to 580 to 670. It's kind of funny what is and isn't considered magic. I'm guessing everything on the magic list is, and Gaia isn't because it's not on the magic list. And Sing, Spellblade, of course, White, Black, Time, Blue, uh, those are all on it. Yeah, 
Yeah, probably the strat would have been to sing from the start. We're now hitting about parity of where I was just attacking with both people. I'm also getting fewer no, you no, know, returns, no effects. So that's speeding up a wee bit as well. <laughs> Only getting one instead of two of those is nice. You can tell he's getting more and more damage because he's using the Aggas now. Return. It's no use. He must be nearly dead, I would say. Once he uses Flare. Yeah, support songs wouldn't proc it. And yeah, Romeo doesn't do anything unless it stops. Oh, there we go, dead. Yeah, I wonder if the algorithms guy just like gone into uh, what does and doesn't trigger it. Yes, it's not the command that does it, it's whether it gets hit. So if you like miss, uh, doesn't like yell at you. Alright, well we now have uh, Holy and Flare. So we have Holy and Flare Blade. So, um, it says to reduce enemies' attack. I'm not sure it's not exactly what it does, but. Uh, what it actually does is it's like a ham. It's like axes. It ignores 75% of uh, the target's defense. It's also 100 power. Um, so Flare Blade is a pretty damn good sword. Holy Blade's really good against anything weak to Holy. And this is just a really nice uh, suite of abilities. Spell Blade is really, really good. It makes up for its um, lead time by having to cast it every battle by just being really, really fucking good. Alright, we're gonna go say hi to Sid. Hey, Sid. He seems to be having a good time, actually. It's like on a roller coaster. Of course, you don't have to, um, like, rescue Sid at all. You can leave him spinning on there forever if you don't do Rug Wizard. Or you could do Rug Wizard and then never come down here. We have Flare Blade is what if Axe, but can hit. Yeah, it's like a half shot. It's his exercise wheel. Alright. Doing the good shit. Is Rug Wizard really no problem with Spellblade? <laughs> Coming here to beat you just a skeleton. That would be pretty funny. Oh no. some other stuff first. Although one of the tablets, because I have Geomancer and Bard, is actually going to be complete pish, so maybe I'll do that first. How am I doing? Uh, I'll probably 
rest of him. One thing now because I keep forgetting uh, to go do it. So I'm gonna do the Undersea Trench as my next dungeon. Before we do that, we're gonna go somewhere that's completely pointless unless you have a summoner, which is honestly a lot of world for me. Actually, I'll probably do two things that are completely pointless unless you have a summoner, but uh, one, we're gonna stop off back in the oldy pirate's cave. Yeah, it's now a landlocked uh, pirate's cave. <laughs> ah, yes, we have to head over this way. There we go. If you have a summoner, this is probably the best attacking summon in the game. Sildra. Flashing very uncomfortable. I think it flashed in the original, but I think the emulator also can't uh, cope with the <laughs> the effect that's supposed to be happening right now. strong all attack it's wind element so it's boosted by the air knife and the magus rod i believe as well so hey coco we've abandoned boca but we're not we're not bringing him back to you uh, there we go we got sildra they boosted it's air boosted is better than like some of the summons which normally have more attack. Like Bahamut, um, it's better than Bahamut because Bahamut cannot be uh, boosted and there's very few enemies that are immune to wind or absorb wind in the game. It's great for random encounter. Okay, the other one I want to do... Uh, ah, yes, here we go, here we go. So in World 1 we did not go into uh, this cave because it's full of nasty uh, squazzles, full of utterly nasty squirrels um, that are probably much less of a problem now. <laughs> and now I have uh, Geomancer, they're actually no problem at all, but yes, yeah, wretched skull eaters. I'm gonna put this guy up back on my bard here. Gaia is one of those few things that can kill him in World 1. Now that we're in World 3, um, we have a lot more uh, stuff that can get around their immense defense, like really good axes, but... Uh, in World 1, um, there's a Gaia move that can get through. Uh, Stalagmite? Stalactite? Uh, one of those that, um, just beats up the Skull Eaters. And would often be what I was used to beat up the Skull Eaters. We're never gonna find a Skull Eater, are we? Switch. There he is. This 
unhelpful. I'm a bit high level, so... Uh... No. They have, like, no health, but they have shitloads of defense, so they're kind of really difficult to deal with about specific strats in World 1. And if you don't have a Beastmaster, there's not all that much point in coming in this cave in World 1. If you don't have a Summoner, there it is, Select so Knight. Uh, if you don't have Summoner, there's not much point in coming in this cave in World 3, but this is, uh, this is a pretty much everything I can think of run, so it's happening. What is you? <laughs> There's three chests in here that get nicked by the werewolf if you let him out of jail. So don't let that werewolf out of jail. Yeah, stalactite. That art really murders them. I'm getting lots of skull ears. I was getting none, and now I'm getting all of them. They can also kill themselves if you manage to confuse them. It is the Death Squirrel. So they have Incisor, and it's uh, a very, very powerful move. <laughs> it will insta-kill you. Probably even at this point, it would kill, like, my bard still. Hello. Yeah, tank. Yeah, they have not a lot of health. <laughs> but they have an absolute buttload of uh, defense. They also give out like five ability points, so I'm quite happy to kill them with uh, Gaia. I guess they're a lot more common in this back room. There's the Blitz Whip, which again is the only reason to come in here in World 1. Uh, it's a really good whip for a Beastmaster. So, in World 1, this didn't lead anywhere. Now we're in World 3, and it actually leads to the basement of Castle Ball. Behind the, the... in the basement there's a locked door. Um, so we're now behind that locked door. And yeah, there's, uh... These statue dudes that we're gonna just murder. We are breaking into our dead friend's basement. Although, I guess it's Krill's basement now. She can come in here. Uh, stop breaking if she owns the place, you know? Alright, so here's a. Oh my god, fuck off. Uh, ooh, hello. No? Here is another summon. So this is like a special fight, he doesn't have time, so he's got like one minute, let's rumble. He has 17,000 health, he's kind of difficult to rush down, but uh... And if you do have Summoner, you probably do have enough to, to kill him in a minute. Uh, we are gonna chump him though. He can be break bladed. Goodbye. If you have a summoner, you can also get him a Catalopopus, but he does have 80% magic evade. So he's pretty difficult to hit with uh, the summon or, uh, or uh, break the spell. It's very, very easy to hit with Break Blade. So Odin is a pretty good summon, although he has very, very situational uses. He either does an instant death kill um, to everything, or he does a heavy attack. 
if there's an enemy that's immune to insta-death on the fuel, even if all the other ones are vulnerable, he will use his attack instead of his insta-death. There is one exception to this, and it's if you use a magic lamp to summon Odin. He will always use his insta-death if there's a non-heavy part, if you use the magic lamp. Which is useful uh, in very, very specific situations as well. You can see why I like grinding in this basement is where, like, it's a really big job point one in World 2. It's kind of the first job point grinding bit I use. I don't really do any of that in one. Unless I have a really bad layout, uh, like, team layout, I need to grind job points. I don't generally do it. I wait until I get to this basement. So we don't actually have to go out through the cave. Um, now that we've been Odin, we can actually unlock the door. I think we can actually unlock the door before we beat Odin. We just have to get on the other side of the door, I think. I do love these statue enemies as a concept, they're very good. And being weak to the item that unpetrifies you is hilarious, I love it. Like, aha, of course, the golden needle, like, turns you from stone into a person, why wouldn't it kill a stone monster? It's great. Oh, come on, I'm fed up now, come on. I want to get out of the basement, please. Well, if you use a golden needle and then you accidentally use a golden needle on the same enemy, uh, it will just uh, do nothing. It won't go to the next enemy. Right, we're in Castle Ball, where everyone is very sad that the king is gone, still. We're gonna rest to the inn, we're gonna buy some more golden needles, and now we're gonna head to the underwater, uh, I, think it's, I think it's the Undersea Trench, it's called. Dozen um, cell cottages. All right. And I said with a bard and um, everyone has sing. That's good. And the bard and geomancer of the undersea trench is uh, completely easy. Don't only have to walk over and get our airship, but that's fine. Barely going back to the cave. Hmm, ah, they are all human shaped. I mean, I think it's the object of the arts are kind of half people, so if they turned back into people, it would probably be quite disgusting. Um, it would probably be extremely gross, uh, and I'm not sure I want to think about that. So I'm going to say they all crumble to dust. So in World 2, we passed by this crack in the ocean floor. Uh, this is actually a tablet dungeon. This is it. It's the hole. There's very little reason to come- I mean, the main reason to come here is that you have a time mage. So we're gonna get Meteor at the end of this. Um, there's a 
couple of other things potentially worth coming in here for, but honestly, it's mostly just, it's mostly just if you want, sorry, I got the hiccups, um, if you want Meteor. Ah, I probably need to spell Blade on here. Go. How am I doing? Okay, Ricky is almost mastered uh, Mystic Knight. That's good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, insta kill him again, because that seems the most fun. Enveloped by flame. Alright, this is the Undersea Trench. There is one type of enemy in here. Um, it's the- there's like actually like a bunch of different unknowns, but they're all unknown, they're all undead. They all, um, suck to kill to, like, counter and shit from other attacks, but Requiem makes really swift work of these guys. Goodbye. So this is a really good grinding spot for, uh, bards. Yeah, if you have a bard, this is easily one of the, the best places to get experience and ability points. And there are places that get you more, like, fights with more, but this is, like, just easy. This is easy money right here. Every other, um, job hates coming down here. <laughs> Even, like, summoners and stuff don't really like, uh, fighting in here. Hit that switch, it takes away this bridge. Alright, you want to hit this one, I think. So, you may have seen the lava floor, and uh, this is why you also want. Uh, something with float or geomancer or light step here. There's a lot of lava floor we're gonna have to walk through and it's gonna be just fine. If any other switch drops you in a lava pit, um, not that I care, but that's the only switch that doesn't drop you in the lava pit. Time Mage, um... It is a good grinding spot in general. Like I said, there are only certain classes and specifically, like, Bard is the one that loves it the most. There are other classes that can deal with the enemies, but... Like... Uh, if you, if you can't easily deal with the enemies, um, they get really annoying and you don't, you don't want to grind in here, honestly. Especially these ones, they have a lot of health. They're very annoying. There is magic lamp, yeah. It's a bit of a faff, though. I, I don't like grinding something that requires me to, uh... Do certain things like that. Like, use items like that. There's no I think I'm grinding. I just have to, like, hold down a... Even, like, the statue spot, um... I don't particularly like that as a grinding spot. I use it all the time, because it's a good one, but... If I can do it without having to go into my inventory for golden needles, I do. I will 
only really like it when I have like Summoner with Ramu uh, or Blue Mage with Old Five Death. And here I only like the Undersea Trench as a, a grind spot if I have Barge and Requiem. You can see the difference in the magic stats um, in the damage I'm doing with Requiem. Mystic Knight has the lowest, Bard's in the middle, and Geomancer's highest. It's an AoE ability, damage ability, only to undead enemies. So there's two shops in here. Um, this actually gives you different uh, items depending on which side you uh, go at. And yeah, AoE, only in the pyramid. <laughs> And the trench. So yeah, you can get the different items from him, depending on which side you talk to him at. It's the stuff you get in the Phantom Village, uh, so it's nothing new if you in the Phantom Village. Yeah, we're meeting the dwarves, Lally Ho! This is it, it tells you that you take the lamp back to where it came from, it'll be refreshed, so... Where does the lamp come from, you may ask? I mean, there's, there's no reason to come down this way. There's like nothing here. It's really funny. We're just walking. Whee. We talk to this dude. And he says something is odd above. There's a forest. So this points out the Phantom Village. Otherwise, there's no reason to come here. He's just digging a tunnel. Where did the magic lamp come from? If we go into the next room... There's a spot there that shined. Hmm. I'm just gonna make sure I do that every time I come in the room. Yeah. So that spot there is where the magic lamp came from, and it regenerates all the magic lamps. So the magic lamp summons in order, and once, and then it gets down to the bottom where it just does nothing. Um, but if you come here and go into that spot, you regenerate your magic lamp. Alright, so we're going around here, we have to hit all these switches. So this is really where, yeah, like, the, uh, the Geomancer makes this place so much easier. <laughs> Even floats kind of annoying because you have to re put it on every time you use a tent or a cottage. Um, Geomancer just doesn't give a shit about uh, damage floors. Hit all these switches. this one. <laughs> Alright. Once you get that, you know you're done. Knuckles, which is double the damage monks do with fists, which makes them do reasonable damage, but at this point you have a Hermes sandal and you would rather have the Hermes sandals on than a Kaiser Knuckle. Now that we've hit all the switches, we can now hit this chest, we can go in here. Alright, so there's a boss coming up, and uh, this boss is a pain, but this team can utterly chump him in like three or four different ways. But I'm gonna show everyone the way you can do it. Um, no matter what team you've got, you can kill these guys. The thing about these guys is that there's three of them, and if you kill one before the others, uh, they revive, and then they do a spell, so you have to kill them all at the same time. Um, so they're all undead, so Requiem does really well, Summons do really well, anything like big AoE, like big damage does real good against these guys. But, one thing to note, I'm gonna use this magic lamp. 
Then I'm gonna have to wait, but uh I think I'll just go to the next one after Bahama. I think there's a lot of them. There's Big B. Yep, there's Tsunami. So Lamp Odin does Zantetsukin and they're none of them are happy. So Magic Lamp Odin insta kills them. And because we're in the place where the magic lamp can get regenerated, we're gonna want Lamp Odin for another boss later. Um, because we're right here, we can just go back to that room and we can just refresh it. We can just do it. So that is the absolutely, totally easy, totally free way to murder them. It's just right here. And now my magic lamp is back up. I will um, save state and show in the next fight that it is Bahamut. For my own check as well, but... So the magic lamp, how much you've used it carries between battles, so... Can't just use it in like one battle and then yeah, see it's Bahamut again. Requiem. So now it's back to Bahamut and it's back to being at the top and Odin's back in it. Yeah, it's like before I knew what magic lamp Odin. The, the boss isn't too hard if you have some means of AoE. If you don't, it's such a nightmare. But magic lamp Odin makes everything better. For free. And if you know, if you had to go further than the, the previous room to regenerate the lamp, it would also be more of a pain in the butt, but it's right there. There's no reason not to, uh, magic lamp the hell out of those guys. It can also be, they're also vulnerable to stone, so if you have a Mystic Knight, you could, like, Break Blade three people and then uh, murder them all at once with Break Blade. I say they're all undead, so Requiem will make good work of them. They're also not heavy, so if you do have a summoner and you do have Odin, uh, Odin should also insta kill them, not just Magic Lamp Odin. But Lamp Odin is easy, and you can get it right there. So this time we hit the switch. We make this bridge. And we leave the trench. Alright, so still more to do in World 3. We still have another tablet, and we have a, a few more optional places we can go. Again, most of the World 3 stuff is, like, tied in with Summoner. I think I'm going to go to Phoenix Tower next. Everything except... No, I think I want to Phoenix Tower for the points. Why not? How are we doing? Ah, ain't away from uh, Mystic Knight. That's good.
Just... There's nowhere to land your airship. Uh, there's just a forest to land uh, your chocobo. So I pretty much always come to Phoenix Tower, uh, despite the fact that it's really only... You only get like the full benefits if you have a summoner, but there are other reasons to come here. If you have a dancer, you can steal a lot of really good uh, dancer gear from here. Uh, okay, he's immune to petrify. He's not immune to stop. Uh, has no weaknesses in terms of elements, so. We could try out Flare Blade. So, Flare Blade actually does cost quite a bit, so it's not. The gold hairpin wouldn't be a terrible idea. Either. Oh, bye! But yeah, World 3, like, remixing World 1 2, yeah, it's really cool. I really like World 3 a lot. Maybe this time I'll use Flare Blade. kill him or heals him. That's what I'm getting out of this. He has 22,000 health. I uh, kind of pain in the ass. He's not immune to stop. I'm just not getting terrible at me. Oh, there he goes. I think it's worth the healing just so I can insta heal him. Ah, yes, I've mastered Mystic Knight now. Yep, alright. I think Krill is the only one who hasn't mastered Mystic Knight now. Yep. on. Sort that out in a minute. And I'll just turn Ricky into Geomancer. will be Lena learning Berserker and Krill learning uh, Mystic Knight, and that's it for Jaws, which is good. Alright, so Phoenix Tower, um, can't run from any encounters. Hopefully with, um, this crew that won't be too much of to tent outside, I'm fine. Alright. And so there are two different doors um, on these floors and you have to pick the right one. There are five floors, there's two pots. One has money, one is trapped. One is one of these assholes. Take my elixirs. I mean, I'd rather you ran away, but... The comedy fight music is very good. It does tip you off immediately that like you're not supposed to actually fight this guy. Please run away. No. Come on. 
reloading if this doesn't run away at three, it did not. I cheat and try and save as many elixirs as possible. I'm I'm not too proud to admit that. I don't I don't like giving these guys more than three elixirs. Even in this crew it doesn't really need them. Um There we go, much better. Alright, so once you give the elixirs and they flee and they give you a hundred ability points, so this is the main reason I come to Phoenix Tower basically every time. Uh, there's five of these pots for 500 ability points for a few elixirs. It is a great way to uh, master a bunch of jobs. Here I want harps for the runettes. Bard. Fire shield and get rid of that cursed ring. Jeez, I don't, I don't want that. If you didn't get reflect rings uh, in the barrier tower, there are enemies in here that uh, drop reflect rings. And then the right row. Nope. There we go. Up we go. See, I only, um, see, so can't, can't run. I think there's a mint pet fire or not. I don't think so. I think we stopped, which is pretty good. Ah, that's pretty fair knife on. Yep, break blade, very effective. So they do a lot of various counters to physical attacks as well, which is kind of, they can get really nasty, it can like range from like zombieing you to like charming you and stuff, so. They're very annoying fights that you can't run away from, but as long as you can chump them, it's fine. And it's free ability points running up here. I guess not free, you do have to pay for them in elixirs. Which you can buy for a shit ton of money. It's also a good place to get some extra cash. I did bankrupt myself by Phoenix Down, so... Sonic Baboom. We continue to go. So by the end of this, I think um, everyone will uh, everyone will have mastered all our jobs. Or so the the pattern to this is actually left, left, right up till floor twenty, and then twenty and twenty five is right, left, right. It's not hard to remember how you get off the tower. Oh, 
know what floor am I on. Um... I lost track! 14, okay, I was on 14. I was like, oh god, am I on 14? Oh, so the pot can change which side of the room it is. It's always the same, it's the same side, it's just like, 5 is always on the right side, 10 is always on the right side, and then 15 is always on the left side. It's not like random, it's just that like, it isn't the same on every floor. On... No, come on. Come on, bunny. Be satisfied. Take my elixirs and go! Yeah, I know, I am. Could you, like, fuck off now? This is, like, the fourth one. I don't want to give you four. Oh, man, I'm definitely not giving him five. Alright. What an asshole. They always do this with safe states because you can... You can get really unlucky and have to give him, like, all of your elixirs. Yeah, there we go. is surprisingly cheap. I didn't realize it was only 8 MP. Climb. This tower has 30 floors. It's very large. Alright, which side of the room are you on this time? seem to, like, get their counters going, which is interesting. And, like, Gaia isn't magic. I'm not gonna counter that. It's fine. How many elixirs are you gonna drag out me this time? I'm pretty sure how this works is it's like a percent chance every time you give him an elixir. Um, like every time you give him an elixir, it's like a 40% chance he'll fuck off. There we go, I'll take three. How are we doing? Yeah, okay, the fifth and final pot will, uh, max everyone out. Whoops, shit, right. This is the floor that's different. This is the right-left-right floor, and I fucked it up. It's fine. So you fuck up. Um, you end up fighting an enemy through a door. Uh, it's pretty funny. Surprise, it's Soul Cannon. Pretty sure running on his bomb doesn't work, yeah. The Dagger Blade does now. I'll be able to go through the door after this. Um, I was saying it was right, left, right, and I just completely forgot it was this floor. 
That's what happens when you fuck up a door. low MP costs when it does last forever, essentially. Um, like, Spellblade doesn't run out until you uh, replace it with something else, or the, uh, or the fight ends. It's a really low um, cost for, like, an infinite spell. Alright, final magic pot, and uh, final joke points I need. Excellent. Everyone is now maxed. I think they're on the jobs I want them to be in anyway. So I think this is my crew now. Everyone has now mastered everything. Yeah. Alright. Knife on. It kind of seems pretty decent here. Like, there's the occasional Sonic Boom and, and stuff, which isn't all that useful, but. Wind Slash is pretty good. That doesn't seem to provoke, like, counters, so. Air Knife boosted Wind Slash does nicely. Grab the last lot of money and then head up to the top. I had Krill as my final Berserker um, in my other run with a Berserker. I could make Krill a Berserker if everyone wants me to. It's a very good sprite. I really like Krill's Mystic Knight sprite as well. I think she's very cute. <laughs> I missed. you do have to fight uh, through the door. There isn't a correct door, there's just a door. The door environment is uh, pretty bad for Gaia. <laughs> Not doing so great. I'm sure my Mystic Knight and my, uh, Berserker will get us there. No? Alright, so all the way at the top of the tower is Haru. I hear you. Yeah, it died. It's here, though. Down he go. Into the flames of hell, I guess. So, uh, back at the start of World 2, uh, Lena and Ferris had a conversation about, uh, Harry and how Harry reminds her 
her mother, and we're finally in a completely optional area in World 3, gonna get, like, the closure to that. The Queen's dying, and the only thing that can cure her is a Windrake's tongue. It's a bit gross. Maybe you shouldn't have... What do you have there? A knife? No! Sword magic does count as magic. At least according to Rogue Wizard. Rogue Wizard thinks it's magic. And Rogue Wizard is the foremost authority on it. Uh, so we get a choice here about, um, cutting out the dragon's tongue or not? <laughs> Will you kill the dragon? To save the mom, or no? But we could be nice. Or we can get Lana punted. And I feel like we're gonna get Lana punted. Also, tongues don't work yet, right? No. Yeah! So if you say yes, uh, the king comes along and punch you. <laughs> But thou mustn't. That's why Harry reminds her of her mom. She tried to cut out his, his tongue. You know, to prove if anyone cutting out anything's tongue. Denied. Alright, uh, so we now have Phoenix. Uh, I mean, useless to us, but... Is the summon Phoenix. Cost 99. It does revive, so it's very expensive. A knife? No! Because we don't have teleport, we have to run all the way back down. So I hope everyone is very excited to run all the way back down this tower. Yeah, this is a pretty easy crew to run through here with. Uh, there are definitely worse crews for uh, a <laughs> nice Sonic Boom nerd. Uh, there are definitely worse crews to run down this tower. In. While we're in the area, I will be going and picking up uh, another summon that's completely useless to us. I, I enjoy doing the stream run where I get everything, because in Fiesta you normally just get the things that are, uh, that are actually useful to you and you don't pick up anything else, so if you don't need to beat Rug Wizard, you don't beat Rug Wizard. You can just go straight to the void after you have, like, the things you need. And for the most part, if you don't have a summoner, um, you are skipping out on most of World uh, 3. I enjoy the chance to uh, go around and get things. I've already done Fork Tower. I actually went um, Mystic Knight Bard Zerk Geo. Mystic Knight and the Bard just beat on... Uh, Uh, Rug Wizard, while the Berserker uh, Runax Minotaur to death. Geo is physical. Gaia is not magic. Get that hippie shit out of here. No! Oh, damn it. Sonic Boom is not particularly helpful to me. Honestly, my Geomancer was just a uh, item bot. 
sure Geo has scientific explanations. It must do, according to Rock Wizard. Yeah, my Geo Master was just there to throw uh, high potions uh, at herself and Faris until uh, Minikor died. And then I silence bladed Rug Wizard to death. I missed. Dia ain't magic. Heal at the top of the tower, thank god. Um, again, this team doesn't need it too bad because it's not using magic, but I, I definitely have teams of summoners and uh, other magic users where I was very, very desperate for MP by the top of the tower. <laughs> Especially because you cannot run from any of these fights. I don't, I don't think you can even run from them with a chicken knife because you can't escape them. Slash, though. See, people don't like Gaia, and I think they're wrong. Wind Slash is, it's, I mean, it's not Sildra, but very few things are Sildra. for Ned. <laughs> um, Ned is probably actually gonna be uh, pretty rough for this crew. Uh, rougher than either Omega or Shinobi. is just so strong now. There we go. That's what I want to see. An insta-kill on attack is pretty good. Oh my god. I wish the encounter rate would fuck off, though. I don't normally get into quite so many fights on my way down. The game is being a little bit mean to me today with encounters. I've definitely been getting a lot more than I feel like I normally do. five or six floors without getting a single fight. Sonic Boom. Could you Sonic Boom the other enemy, please? Oh, I guess I have Break Blade. It's fine. Oh, Lamia's Heart. You can get uh, Hermes Sandals as a drop in here. Um, but you probably should have already been to the, uh, to the village and gotten, uh, four. Alright, well, while we're in the area, let's go visit Bahamut. Hey, 
Hey, I do love sinking this guy in the quicksand. It's very fun. To the desert, I mean, unlike the swamp where you're going into in World 2 a lot, there's not many places where you go into the desert. I mean, I guess the um, encounter in World 2 in the moving sands, if I could quicksand that, that would probably be pretty easy. Oh, I don't know if you can quicksand it. Alright, so big beam, you have to walk up and around this way. So this is the uh, North Mountain again. We moved a little bit, but it's pretty much the exact same. We're just going to run away. I'm gonna power that chicken knife, but still isn't fully powered. I just need to check. What power is my chicken knife right now? Who has it? My Geomancer? 94. So it's getting there, but it's still uh, still a waste for full power. Again, not that I'm using it for very much other than um, running away from fights. <coughs> oh, excuse, excuse me. Okay. <coughs> Sneeze again. Sorry. Stones. Clearly now that we're back, Lena is gonna uh, poison herself with those flowers again. She just loves poison and being poisoned. and you're poisoned. So he has some nasty moves like Mega and Giga Flare, but a lot of them are reflectable. Um, and as I say, he's very vulnerable to being stopped, so... His summon is pretty good, not a mental good damage, but if the enemy's not immune to wind, um... Boosted Soldier does as much, if not slightly more damage, for less MP. So he's not really a summon use very often. <laughs> he costs a lot, and uh, with all the elemental boosting in this game, you usually want to do something else. Oh well. Got unstop briefly there. He has 40,000 pounds, which I am uh, chumping my way through. Oh, right, it's too damn high. But I'm swift sogging, so I can just keep him stopped for longer with one person. And also so that everyone else gets more attacks in faster. If you have a summoner, he's pretty easy, honestly. Carbuncle deals with a lot of his shit. 
Um, Golem does a lot for the rest. Bye bye. Now we have Bahamut. So we're missing the uh, three viable uh, summons because we didn't bother buying them. I can buy them in the Phantom Village, but uh, we're only missing one fight summon. Uh, I'm thinking of what else do I have to do in World 3. There's, there's one... Oh, there's one more thing... Two more things in the submarine. One's a tablet dungeon, one's something else. So I'll go do... Those two things. I'm trying to think, is there anything other than that? I wonder if we're getting to the end. I feel like we might be at the end of World 3 after those two things. And that'll probably be the stream. What I'll probably do is I'll split. Like, I'll be going for two hours, so it's not like it's gonna be a short stream or anything. Um. Yeah, I'll finish off World 3 today, and then probably on Thursday, I will do all of the Void in one stream. It's like a pretty good way to uh, divide it up. Especially since Shenmue is going to take a while, even on Fast Forward. down North Mountain, go back to our Black Chocobo and go pick up our uh, airship. You don't need the Black Chocobo for anything other than coming into this area, so we're just gonna abandon him at the Phantom Village again. Really, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've missed, and I really don't think so. I think I've done pretty much everything. Hi. Village. Um, okay, don't need to heal. I need to buy some more potions. I don't know for everything else. It's good. It's a very spoopy village. Alright. Nope. I will accidentally jump into the void constantly. I wanted to go over this way. Get up here. Up here is where I want to go. Yes. Alrighty. So, right near the beginning of the game, we came to the water tower and there was a crystal shard. We couldn't get, so I'm gonna go get that crystal shard now. You're underwater, and we have seven minutes to get all the way down and back up again. Luckily, I think every encounter in here is a 100% run, so you can just run from all of them. You do see lots of uh, enemy silhouettes, which are very nice. Creepy ass silhouettes. That chest is replenished, do not pick it up now, we'll be getting that later. 
kind of falling, swimming downwards. We are walking in water, so... Hearts is just special, I think. There's a shard here. Before I go into it, I'm going to... Turn the battle speed up. I want to see if turning the battle speed up does something. Uh, no. This is famed Mimic Gogo. He is the fucker that has the third golden hairpin as his rare steel. Good luck if you only have the thief knife. I've done it. It sucked. Uh, I can't recommend it. Is this guy what he does? Is he, yes, he says he's explaining. He mimics you, except he mimics you like a truck. <laughs> if you attack him for like 100 damage, he hits you for like 9,999. Oh no, we have a Berserker. Right, I have to kill my Berserker. Bye. Good. Thank you, Gogo. Uh, as I say, you hit him, he hits you back harder. Um, so the way to get through this fight is we actually sit and do nothing. But, um, if you have, if you want to steal his golden hairpin, you have, of course, to use like the thief knife and mug him, and hopefully get the hairpin instead of his common steel. Oh, it's, it's so, I cannot recommend stealing his golden hairpin. It's not worth it. Not even for a third half MP. I did it in my run this year where I had four magic users. I wanted uh, golden hairpins on as many people as I could. And it really wasn't worth the hour I spent trying to get this damn hairpin. <laughs> just, just, just grind out more elixirs instead. More profitable. I was hoping up in the battle speed would make this go faster, but yeah, you just have to spend like a solid minute and a half doing absolutely nothing, hopefully. If you could please hurry up, my dude. This always takes far longer than, like, I think it should. Oof. There we go. I feel like it is like a solid minute and a half of doing nothing. You may do nothing, and are coping at nothing yourself. And then he spiels for a bit, so you have to spend even longer waiting for him. Shut the fuck up. Alright, he gives you the final, uh, sort of non-GBA job, um, which is mime. That was what was in that crystal. Yeah, Bart's wins by doing absolutely nothing. Alright. Level 5, so don't, don't steal from Even if you have a really magic heavy crew, it's not... Even with a thief, it's not really worth the hassle I'm trying to get that rare steel. Alright, so I have plenty of time to get back up, but uh, in this chest... Air! But you don't get another seven minutes, you go back up to seven minutes. Um, so if you get this chest on the way down when you've only spent like 30 seconds in here, you're like, oh. You don't get another shot at it, so uh, seven minutes is more than enough to, to go downstairs, get yelled at by uh, Gogo, and then come back up without that chest. You honestly only really need, like, five. And that's mostly because Gogo's a dick and makes you wait around for, like, three minutes. Alright, out we go. I'm gonna heal up. And then we're gonna go to the final tablet dungeon. Alright, 
this also requires a submarine, but we're gonna go on the airship first to get to the area. Go this way. in this cave. So in World 2 we actually came in this cave to get to uh, to get to Shote. Now now we're here to get to the fourth tablet dungeon. The enemies are now um, much easier than they were in World 2 because quite a bit stronger but still not really worth fighting. This has the desert enemies of World 1 in it. Alright. One more gargoyle dungeon. Alright, so we want... Spellblade on someone. on technique. Miss! Probably not going to be fighting much in here. Um, I don't really, I don't have anything like uh, Requiem. It's not really undead anything in here. Pretty decent items to pick up in here. No, I do have Requiem, it's just they're not undead. So unlike the trench, Requiem doesn't kick ass here. Of course I have Requiem, I have all of it. So. I just meant that Requiem doesn't do work here. Thank you. Things I could do is there are weaknesses to elements, so like the Aga blades would uh, destroy a bunch of the enemies here. It's just not worth the uh, the effort, especially now that I have mastered all the new jobs. I don't need any ability points, so meh. Secret passage down here. Oh, here we go. Rune blade. So the rune blade is better than it appears on its face. I'm pretty sure. Um, it has less attack, but it uses MP for critical hit. So it's actually a lot better than its 50 attack would uh, would suggest. It acts like the rune axe. Um, I think I'd probably still prefer the assassin's dagger, but the close one. Maybe have to do some science. I wonder. I wonder if 
to probably to keep if you change your weapon. I actually don't know that. Maybe I'll do some science uh, in a boss fight. That'll be fun. I steal fish, I really do not want to fight you. Can you focus that energy, buddy? I guess one steel fist on its own is uh, not too bad. Chest. There's a free reflect ring for you as well. If you only need one, um, it can be quite prudent to just come to this uh, this place as well. Although if you need one for, say, Rug Wizard, you're a bit late at this point. Dartmouth bow is pretty damn good. There's some pretty good weapon and uh, shield pickups in here. Enhancer, for example. Uh, which is, yep, yeah, uh, it's gonna be the sword that, uh, rather than the Rune Blade, I am having the Enhancer on my Mystic Knight. 102 attack, boost your magic. It's a very good sword. It's gonna be very helpful. You get an enhancer in the void as well, so you don't have to, um... That's not by Maiden's Kiss, huh? Put the air knife back on. Alchemy is quite hard to run away from. Zephyrus, but uh, pretty difficult. I definitely want to put the air knife back on my uh, Geo for now. Probably forever, honestly. Kind of your Geo Master's best weapon. Alright. All in the hole. Ah, Titan's Axe. Uh, huge axe must be used by giants. The rune axe is actually stronger as long as you have MP. And especially if you have, like, a magic, um, back to carry over. It's a pretty good axe if you don't have, uh, any, anything that boosts berserker's magic. Once your MP runs out, the rune axe's damage does go down a decent amount. I'm gonna save day and uh, oops, still alive. Okay, I'm gonna show what happens if you maybe kiss the frog. Hi! So you mean kiss the frog, it's a red dragon. <laughs> There's a second Aegis shield. Um, most crews don't need a second Aegis shield, so you don't need to come down here, but, uh, you know, Aegis shield is, like, the best shield in the game. By the way, there are spikes if you, like, try to get those chests from anything island straight uh, ahead of them. Uh, they will spike and damage you. What did I do? Oh, I just Holding down the A button is fine. Alright, that's 
over then. And I slowly back up. Alright, to continue on, we have to do is hit this switch and jump in this pit. And we reach the tablet. Our fourth and final tablet. No, I, I don't think I will, my dude. So there's Leviathan. So the, the thing about Leviathan, though, um... He's entirely optional. You, you can just leave without, like, fighting him. Like, there's an exit down there, and you can just go in. But, uh, we're doing everything, so we're gonna fight him. And he's actually quite tough, so, uh, let's do it. I do have a Coral Ring, which I can equip, but I think I'd rather have the Harmony Sand Rolls. Alright. I'm gonna put some Dragon Blade on. You, you don't even really need to come here yet. It's like, um, really the only reason to come here is even less reason than the Undersea Trench, honestly. But if you want a second enhancer, a second Aegis Shield, um, a couple of the weapons that are in here. Um, other than that, I mean, the, the magic prize you get for it is Leviathan. He has 40,000 health, um, he counters magic and physical because he's a shithead. Uh, his physical encounter I think is just that entangle. His magic encounter, uh, uh, his magic counter, um, is Tidal Wave, which is infinitely more annoying. And even if you have a summoner fighting him, his the problem with Leviathan is he's water element. And there's no easy way to boost water element. The only thing that can boost water element is a chemist mix. Um people have tried fixing that and it broke every other kind of elemental damage boosting. <gasps> no! Christ, what an asshole! You just tied away with me twice in a row? What a dick! Oh god, please hit him. And he just shield saving my bacon a wee bit there. Woo! Get a reflect ring though. So yeah, he's actually, um, <laughs> he's actually, uh, le like, less useful than even Bahamut because of the lack of boost. But, uh, well, that went well. It's, it's fine. It, it's, it's fine. It's fine and good. You know, it's good and fine. Alright, so we are going to go back to our submarine. We're going to go to the, uh, the castle. Sealed castle. And we are going to unlock the other six weapon. And pretty much everything after Rug Wizard was completely optional. <laughs> Holy Flare Blade was really the only thing I needed to pick up. Hey, doing everything is fun. There's a couple other things um, to specific teams that I don't have, but uh, never get those. Like, there's a Stingray to fight in a specific ocean square that uh, can give you the Blue Magic Mighty Guard or drop a really good uh, Dragon Beak. Uh, well, hits a dragon weakness with very good whip. 
Into the sealed castle where the shield dragon will uh, annoy me greatly, I am sure. Oh! He takes Death Soul. He's, he's easy to run from. Alright. Put a tablet down. Grabbing uh, Yochi's bow, which is a pretty good bow. Only for rangers. We're gonna pick up the partisan, which is gar- no, holy lance, sorry, which is garbage. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad lance, but the problem with it is it has holy element attached to it. Uh, and there are certain bosses that absorb holy, so it's just it's just kind of annoying. All right, I'm gonna get the katana, which this isn't actually a katana; it's a ninja blade, I think. I, I can have a look at it. Um... Yes, it's a, it's not a katana in the sense it's not the katanas that the samurai can use. It's a ninja sword. <laughs> it's very confusing that they call it katana when there is a weapon category of katanas that are only used by uh, by samurai. Right now we've done that. We crumble this tablet and we put the fourth one down. So you can only get three at a time. You do have to put the tablets down. All right, we're gonna get Excalibur, which is garbage. Um, Again, it's a sword. It's a night sword. It's a pretty powerful night sword, but it has holy element attached to it. Which again makes it useless for certain bosses. Uh, this Magus Rod, very, very good if you have a Black Mage or a Summoner. It boosts all elemental damage except water, I believe. Very, very useful if you have a uh, Black Mage or a Summoner. This is the Sage's Staff, which is for White Mage. It boosts the power of Holy, so a White Mage will do Mondo damage with Holy with this Sage's Staff. It's a very good weapon for a White Mage. That should be all the legendary weapons. Alright, so now we've gotten all the legendary weapons, we're on the GBA version, so... And then it comes up to us and says there was an earthquake. If we had a submarine, we'd go check it out. Well, we have a submarine. Why don't we go check it out? Yes. Into this glowy crack. Yeah, bubbles. Incredible force. This only opens up once you've gotten all four tablets and you've gone and unlocked all the weapons. It's a little awkward to locate. It is just some bubbles, like, kind of south, uh, west of the Phantom Village. This is actually where, uh, the GBA bonus dungeon is. You can't actually get into the dungeon until you beat, uh, Ned, until you beat the final boss. But we do get access to the three GBA exclusive, well, three of the four GBA exclusive um, we get Oracle, we get Gladiator, and we get Cannoneer. All of these jobs are really good. Oracle's probably the least good, and could still good, still good some, yeah, still do some good shit with it. Um, Cannoneer's probably my favorite one. It's probably the best one. 
Gladiator is the best brain dead one. It does Mondo damage. It's like a better knight. Cannoneer is another chemist. You want to be a chemist with guns? That's Cannoneer, baby. Alright, so now that we've gotten these, he will also sell ammo for the Cannoneer. Um, which you cannot buy until now. Yeah, predict. Um, it's very weird. It's based on your last MP digit and stuff. You can basically use it to do cycle. And that's the easiest way to do it. Because oracles can get you murdered if you do not understand what they're doing. Because some of their effects hit both enemy and uh, ally alike and can kill you. Um... So oracles are very weird to use. You kind of want a guy for oracle. Gladiator is the most easiest. Just um, give him a good sword. Go. Cannoneers also get open fire, which is a very, very good move before you even get the chemist stuff. Cannoneer is a pretty solid physical class before you get the uh, ammo. And then because a chem becomes a chemist. So he, like is around in a lot of towns now, uh, and a lot of inns and stuff to sell ammo. Press the switch on the wall, but it doesn't do anything right now. Cannot enter. You can't do the GBA bonus dungeon until you beat it. And it's extremely difficult, and I've never done it. thing I might pick up. It's a pretty good thing to pick up if you have uh, a dancer. And I often forget about it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go get it. It's useless to me, but uh, watching might like it. Alright, I'm looking for Reg Ol, which I believe is that top. Basically straight up or down. Is it Reg Ol? Yeah, it has cut the bosses are nuts. Um they're they're like a gal so if you come here in world three, she gives you a ribbon. And it's like, hey, you know all those ways to cheese Omega and Shinryu? How about none of that? Fuck you. Um you need Beastmaster Thief and I think like a certain type of magic class to get through one of the bosses, to like do the puzzles and get through the bosses, you kinda need specific classes as well. It was very, very difficult to do in a fiesta. And yeah, it kinda wants your level to be insane. I think that is everything. I'm probably just gonna sit at the Phantom Village. I think that's everything in World 3. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed, and I don't think so. I've gotten mine, I've done all the tablet dungeons, not that, that one, that one. Um, gotten all the summons. I think that is it for our round world three uh, tour. So it's um. Oh god, yeah, like, grinding really high level in this game is actually really difficult. <laughs> the game doesn't expect you to end the game any higher than what I am now, like, 30s. Um, getting higher than that is, is an effort. But, uh, yeah, I think we're done with FF5 for today. Two and a half hours, not bad. On Thursday, uh, I'll be doing The Void, so... I've got the whole of the void, I've got Omega, I've got Shinryu, I've got Ned, so... Uh, I think what I'll probably do for Shinryu, because my method requires uh, sitting and waiting until Shinryu dies, um, is uh, I will probably do a dicey run while uh, Shinryu dies in the corner. I'll try and set that up for Thursday, but... Uh, 
join us at seven uh, Eastern, so in three and a half hours, weird to say, for some more uh, Grandia. We're continuing on in Grandia. We found a small weird child. We have to go get some herbs to cure him. So uh, see you later tonight for more old RPGs. Thanks everyone for coming. I'll see you later. Bye bye.